coming to New York, it was unimaginable. It was unimaginable until I did it. I had $60 when I moved to this country. $60, three $20 notes. My parents have a big home. And I was just thinking, here I am on the streets with my suitcases and I have no way to leave. I just want to create a loving community and to surround myself with a loving community. And that's what I hope to create here. Thank you all so much for being here. I am so proud that it's pride. So our next speaker is Tatenda Kwaru. Can you come to the stage? When my mother gave birth to me, my parents decided to raise me as a boy. <laughs> but after a few years, that's when they realized, oops, maybe we made a mistake. No kuti oneza Jesu. Amavadiwa kani Jesu. No kuti wakati oneza Jesu. Right, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good to keep these photos. Oh, yes, this is Tatenda. Yeah. Uh, it's 1995. Tatenda was a brilliant and very bright child. She came always top of her class during her primary education. We raised Tatenda hoping he was a boy. But later on, we could see strange things, strange behavior happening in here. He was more aligned to the girls. Boys wear shorts and a shirt, and girls wear dresses in school. So I had to go to school wearing a short and a shirt. And that was hard. She cried for me to buy a dress. And also she, she wanted to wear high-heeled shoes. And then she would walk like a girl. And at one day, there was a big mountain down there. And then people would say, if you walk around that mountain without breathing, you can change your gender. She said, Mama, I'd like to go and walk around that big mountain so that I can change to be a girl. And then I said, ah, why? I just knew it. I felt it in my gut. I was just, I'm a girl. It's, I don't think there's no explanation more than that. And then in grade six, she had um, what we call hernia. We took her to, to a doctor and that doctor operated her. But then the doctor said, you know, when I operated this boy, there was something like an ovary. What I sit down. My parents were teachers. We were not poor, but we didn't have much, and we couldn't afford to go to doctors and stuff. A red color. My mom said, "Well, if you're not sick, let's not worry about it. Hide it for now." And then all of a sudden, one day when I went to the township, I found Tatenda wearing a bra. Oh boy, did she not flip in front of everybody. She embarrassed me and said, why are you wearing a bra? And I screamed and I said, I want to die. When we came back here, she was angry with me. And then I said, what's wrong with you? Never in our life had we experienced such a scenario. We were the first family to experience that. And we thought it was like a bomb being dropped at our 
in our life. It was two hard years uh, trying to get off the ground and stand on my feet. But I would love to meet someone so that I can share that with them. This is my dinner. I, I was talking to all these people, but I get annoyed when people just want to chat me up and sex me and talk about sex when you don't even know me. Oh my God, this guy is 19 years old. What would I do with a 19 year old? Breastfeed him to sleep? I don't want to date no baby. <laughs> He's 19, what is he doing? Every time you meet a straight man and you tell them, oh, you know, I'm a woman, there's no difference. They are a little hesitant when it comes to that because they start thinking about the anatomy, what it looks like, and they feel, I don't know if it's challenged or threatened or there's something just about it. People feel uncomfortable, which is like something that I'm trying to break. After college, I moved to South Africa. I found a job in a transgender organization. Oh, also, I managed to see doctors, and also I started taking hormones. She, later on, she brought me a medical report. From there now, she was confirmed as intersex. Then we knew exactly what we were facing. My name is Tatena Waro. I'm from Gutu in Zimbabwe. I think I first heard about Tatenda by watching a video that she was in. I need a home. I need money. <laughs> I need food. So I reached out and said, this is who I am. I work for Interact. I'm intersex. I'm here and available as a resource if she, if she just wants to talk to another intersex person. Intersex has been integrated into the LGBT community. So I'm, it's just making me think, was it like that for you in Zimbabwe? Yes. I realized that I was being placed under the LGBTQ community, which I wasn't. At some point, I actually lived as a transgender woman because I didn't know. Out of all the intersex people in the world, there's only, relatively speaking, a handful of us speaking out right now. You combine that with being a black woman and being an immigrant in this country today. So that's a heavy burden. There are moments that I just feel like, how much more? It, it's not, intersex isn't the evil bad thing here. Discrimination and the lack of acceptance by others is what's evil and what's bad. <laughs> Some tissues, yeah, why don't we take a break? Yeah. <laughs> So what we are doing for this school today, we use our own resources to transport these Bibles. I am hoping for a betterment in the understanding of who we really are, what God expects us to do as his children. This is the powerful message I've brought to your school. The Americans are living in an open society. But here we have people who are very reserved and we are very negative about people of that nature. We tend to hide these children from the outside world. We equally reject attempts to prescribe new rights that are contrary to our values, norms, traditions and beliefs. We are not gays. I remember these two men very vividly. They beat me up and said, why do you behave like a woman? I said, well, I'm a woman. How am I supposed to behave? Whilst they were beating me up, I lost hearing to my other ear. And I still do not hear with that other ear. No, no, they would pick names like 
she's homo, she's homo, she's mm -hmm. homo, she's homo. And then I said, well, look here, if we can't accept Tatenda as she is, what of the other community? Let us accept her as she is. That's when things started to change. And I went to church and I just started changing the way I dressed. But once my father got up and he told people, hey, that child of mine that he thought was a boy, she's not a boy, she's a girl. Doctors have even confirmed that she's a girl. So, you know, you need to stop talking and leave her alone. And I thought, wow, this man never ceases to amaze me. Because that's not an easy thing to do. From the word go, I knew this was a risky business. When you're attacked, the police is not going to be on your side because you're a weirdo, you're a queer person. So I just thought, okay, if I do not stop doing this, I may actually lose my life. It was so difficult. To change the mindset. Uh, it was so difficult uh. to change the mindset. And the, <sighs> especially this area is too small. So we, uh, finally we, we, we were able to accept for her to go to a place where she could live so freely and where she could take a, a position in society. My dad had just gotten his pension, so he took all his money and paid for my ticket. We drove her to the airport and I think the mother openly cried at the airport. Uh, I could also feel the emotions, but as a male, you try to contain your emotions as hard as, as possible. And then we bid you a farewell. So that was the most difficult decision I've ever had to make. I think for him to letting me go. I didn't have a job, I didn't have a home that I could call my own. And I had to uh, wait for almost seven months just to get work authorization. I've gotten a job, which I'm very proud of because it's a nonprofit that gives grants to LGBTQI organizations. I think in the morning, especially when I'm down, I just want to feel sorry for myself for a little bit. You know, I'm on hormones as well, so it's sometimes I'm more emotional than I should be. I thought I was coming to a country that probably understood intersex stuff more than any country. Oh boy, did I have a rude awakening. LGBTQ is. I don't know the I. I? I? I don't know. I don't know. I do know that it means um, intersex, but I've never like researched too much about it. Like you know like the basics of it. The like, LGBTQ. You don't know, like, you don't know like, the, like the whole variety of that. Do you feel connected to Pride, like a big parade or anything? Like no, that? I'm sent to say I'm going on. Although I do acknowledge, you know, what happened here in the history, I was never part of it. Everything is just overwhelming me. <laughs> I want to be home. I miss my parents. There is no love in this country, to be quite honest. <sighs> you know, Sundays are usually harder for me because 
Sunday is like a family day. I don't know if it's like that here. Back home Sunday, you make food, you go to church together, you have lunch together afterwards. The Israelites were surrounded on all sides. They were facing the sea. So Sundays, it never gets old for me. I'm always sadder than any other day actually. I feel marginalized, yes. Am I angry about it? Yeah. But I am working on it to try and be more stable and be more stronger. She might face difficult things, but she might hide it from us. I think she is conscious of our weaknesses that she might not want to harm us any further. Hey, Tatenda. How are you? Fine, fine. We are back from the church uh -huh. now. So the past month, I've been doing speaking engagements. Yeah. Uh, here, they call it Pride Month, where mm -hmm. you, it's basically you're being proud of who you are and where you come from and what you're doing for the yeah. community. All right. So I was doing uh, events, speaking to people and just encouraging people to love themselves more. So I'm on my way to being the next opera. <laughs> <laughs> That's your wishes, huh? Out of Ellen. Ellen. Yeah, I love Ellen. I yeah. love Ellen, but opera is black. So yeah. I can start right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. Yeah, it's okay. So Today, I'm going to church to go and pray and ask for the energy for the week. You know, mm -hmm. we need mm -hmm. the source mm -hmm. of energy every day. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. How is Dad holding up? He's coping up nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> you see him now? Yeah. Mm. Baba? How are you, Tadid? How are you? Fine. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's so nice to see you guys. I'm going to go to church. Mama, mm. are you crying? No. So, no. Okay. I need to go to church. You cannot cry. Okay now. Mm. Mm. I'm fine now. Mm. We are not uh, here to say we would wish Tatenda to be an American. We would wish our society to understand the nature of Tatenda and accept it as equally as a, a good citizen like anybody else. This issue of intersex is complicated. She suffered quite a long time. As a mother, it's hard to accept it. Mm -hmm. I feel for her. I know she's so brave. Yes, but sometimes she's overwhelmed. When she talks about being intersex, I think it releases uh, emotions. Let her talk. Let her tell the people about what she is.
I am a black woman, I am an immigrant, and I'm an intersex woman. That is something that is just built automatically to destroy me. But from that, I rise. Thank you. I could tell that you know, people were intently listening to Tatenda, and I hope that it really does affect them deeply. I think it's really important for her voice to be amplified specifically because she is a part of this community that oftentimes we just ignore. Day. I just hope everybody who watches that feels the independence in themselves. Because when I watch that, I'm like, oh, that's, that's for me. It's, it's yeah. me. I'm independent and I can say what I want and I can own it. Don't you let anybody silence you. Oh, oh nobody's going to silence me. That's beautiful.